Hi drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. In today's video, we're going to examine Max Roach playing Mr. Hi-Hat. This is a solo composition on just the hi-hat cymbals himself and the stand. He plays on the stand and he does lots of groovy stuff. So let's check this out, Mr. Hi-Hat. Okay, right away, notice the bottom symbol is larger in diameter than the top. <clears throat> this is not very common today, but in the old school days, a lot of jazz drummers would have offset sizes of the hi-hat symbols. The reason for that is to avoid vapor lock. Uh, the backbeat that we hear in rock and roll, which is the two and four snare hit, was originally created on the hi-hat. And this was the early stages of the development of the drum set, which was through jazz drumming. So the two and four was snapped with the left foot. And it needed to be nice and firm with a great snap. And so oftentimes, if the cymbals were slightly different sizes, you would have no vapor lock, and it would really ensure a really good snap. Now, right as I pause the video, you can see that he's actually adjusting a little bit of the tension screw over the felt on the top hi-hat cymbal. Uh, a lot of these jazz drummers have the nice, relaxed kind of hi-hat cymbal tension. In fact, it looks like this clutch is missing some components, and maybe that's the way he likes it. Um, hi-hat clutches have always been the bane of every drummer's life because the, they tend to loosen up when you're playing. The best clutch on the market is the Remo Quick Lock Clutch. So just take my word for it. It has a little locking mechanism so there's no screws that can come undone when you're playing. And it has really nice felt cushions to allow the cymbals to breathe very, very beautifully. So he's trying to get the right sort of resonation. Imagine taking a crasher ride cymbal and tightening the wing nut down as firmly as you could so the cymbal barely can move. It literally chokes the sound. So when you have the cymbal loose, it can breathe and resonate. So let's check out. You can see how it's loose, breathing. So his left stick is like hovering against the stand. There he goes. Notice how he's working the tips and the edge of the stick on the top and the side. Oh, fanning. So this is a three note pattern, up, down foot, up, down foot. So, do, da, do, da, do, da, do, da, do, da, da. Really cool kind of an effect that he's getting on the hi-hat here with this. Using his foot as another stroke. So this is called fanning the hi-hat. Moving the hand up and down. And now it's triplets. Double strokes, pair of doodles, pair of doodles. Right, left, left. Right, right, left. More fanning. Single strokes with fanning up and down. Okay, so that was short and sweet. Max Roach, Mr. Hi-Hat. Pretty interesting. Uh, the story goes, way back in the day, they would have these drum battles that these drummers would do. And um, as I did some historical research, reading some articles, looking at some ancient videos, and it would be like uh, Gene Krupa, we'd have Chick Webb, we had um, Papa Joe Jones, the drummer with the Count Basie Orchestra, Buddy Rich, and uh, I think Louis Belson might have been involved at a later date. But anyways, the story goes is that they would all do their drum battles, and then here comes Papa Joe Jones walking out and putting a hi-hat stand on the stage and a drum stool. 
and blowing everybody away by what he did with the hi-hat. So I really believe this Max Roach, Mr. Hi-Hat, was a tribute to the great Papa Joe Jones that was really one of the first drummers that popularized the use of the timekeeping aspect of keeping time on the hi-hat. This was prior to the ride cymbal. The ride cymbal wasn't as popular for timekeeping. It was mostly the hi-hat. Early days, it was on the snare from the marching tradition of Dixieland music, New Orleans jazz. And then it moved to some timekeeping on splash cymbals, little choke sounds like that, until eventually the hi-hat came into play from the low boy. And then it moved on over to the ride cymbal. And I believe Kenny Clark is attributed to being one of the earlier drummers that really popularized the use of the ride cymbal. Certainly in small group, it was really dominant. So what we saw here was some of those kind of fanning things where you bring the stick up and down. So on the way up, you strike the front half of the stick and on the way down, you strike the back half of the stick. And this works really good for traditional grip. And of course, you have to hold the stick in kind of a unique fashion in order to get that fanning movement happening. And when I did it in high school or early college, rather, um, I wasn't very good at it and I didn't spend a lot of time on it. Actually, you got to be careful so you don't scrape your knuckles. So it's really something you really have to learn how to just relax and use gravity, move your hand up and down like you normally would and just bend your wrist lightly so you can catch the stick on the way up and catch the, I guess, the hi-hats on the way down, up and down. So really cool stuff. He didn't do a lot of stuff underneath. If you watch a lot of Buddy Rich stuff, uh, he sets up a lot of the tunes with some hi-hat timekeeping, messing around and doing some amazing stuff where he's playing underneath the hi-hat back and forth. Really, really cool stuff that he's able to do the one and only Buddy Rich. So we're hearing that kind of influence. And then you could actually play with the button, the stick on the bottom of the cymbals. And then you saw in the earlier segment of the video where the tip of the stick was right by the stand, the post of the stand. And when you play on the top of the hi-hat cymbal and then you play with the stick on the stand, the term was tickling the hi-hat. It had this ticky-tocky little sound where you can mix the nice little short articulations of the tip stroke with the closed hi-hat on top with the clicking sound of the metal and the wood hitting the the tube and the hi-hat stand. So he got a little bit of that in there, but mostly it was just fanning some stuff on the bottom and just kind of experimenting with opening and closing some different kinds of rhythms. So very interesting. Get an example of some of the different things you can do with just the hi-hat cymbals, having that ability to pedal the sound with your foot or use your hand. So you can, you obviously can mute with your hand and muffle with your hand, but you can seriously muffle with your foot when you step on a stand like that. So and a little bit of information about hi-hat clutches. Again, the Remo Quick Lock clutch is the one I recommend because it really does never get loose. So hope you enjoyed Mr. Hi-Hat. I always like the hi-hat and it's a great thing to get good at. So if you did like the video, subscribe to my channel, uh, give me a thumbs up, um, all that stuff. Hit the bell and if you're interested in lessons and would like to learn more about fanning and all that kind of hi-hat stuff, contact me. I got the text information in the text box below. So until then, I'll see you on the next reaction and analysis video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.